Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sportfish boat. Well, welcome to Renovation Sportfish. In this episode, things are looking up. I say that because this episode we're going to cover uh, what I did to the ceiling. I call it the ceiling. Some people call it the overhead. I think that's probably the proper term for it, but um, most people would refer to it as a ceiling if they're not into boating, and even if they're into boating. So that's what I'm going to call it here. Forgive me for my you know, terminology. But anyways, um, the original ceiling was a uh, vinyl headliner. Didn't really like it. Was trying to get as, rid of as many fabrics as I could in this boat. And so I thought long and hard on what I wanted to do, and we'll um, cover what I did in this episode. This is another project I did in 2018. It's the third episode of projects I did in 2018, so um, let's get right into it. So the first thing I had to do was make some templates for the panels I was intending to um, put in between the ceiling beams. So um, we'll get into um, that. Now, some of the footage that's in here, I took on my iPhone back in the day. Um, so just like the last two episodes I put out, um, it's not the best footage or anything, but um, it's what I have and is what I'm going to use. I thought I'd show uh, what I actually used to make these templates and glue them together. Now I bought myself this little mini hot glue gun, um, and then these are the refills for the glue. And then these are just a couple of scrap pieces I was going to glue together. So this has been heating up for a little while. So basically you just squirt the glue on like that. And then, I'll do it this way. And then you uh, just stick them together there. Hold it for just a second or so. And then that's it. It's, it's held together. So it worked really good. It was quick and simple. And uh, now we can get into um, showing some of the actual uh, doing of it. So today is May 27th, 2018. The project for today is to take all these strips of plywood and make templates for some ceiling panels I'm going to put in between these beams. Now, the beams really weren't designed to be seen. They're made out of scrap mahogany glued together pretty crudely. Um, and I do not want to put the vinyl covering over them that the factory had. So I don't want the beams exposed. I'm going to do something else to the beams. Uh, put a, like a mahogany veneer or something over them. But first thing I want to do is make some templates for these to cover up this plywood in between the panels. It's going to have kind of a faux wood look, um, like wood planking look. I'm making those at home, I'm routing each one. But these are just some strips I'm going to use to make some templates so they can cut each piece. They're all, all the beams that are up on the ceiling are not the same width apart. They vary from 10 and a half to almost 12 inches. And they're not quite parallel either. So, and because they're made crudely, they're a little rough, and uh, some are a little twisted and whatever, but... And, uh, so each panel has to be templated individually for the space that it's going to go into. So, it's going to be my task today. Hopefully I can get all these done and uh, move on to something else. Well, today's May 28th, Memorial Day. Uh, yesterday I managed to get all of the ceiling panel templates finished. Mm, except for this one here, it's a port side front one. A little more complicated because of the curve of the windshield. But it's not too bad. I just put this thinner batten piece in and as I go along I just kind of push it into place and hot glue a little cross brace in there. Uh, I'll just trim it on the end over here and that'll be it. So not too much longer. I'll have them all done. 
show you the ones I did yesterday. They're all out here in the cockpit. And they are there. You can see them. Starboard's in that front one. It's already done. So, didn't take long. wanted to go over uh, the actual panels I used for the ceiling. Now I've looked at subsequent um, videos I've taken when I was doing the galley ceiling and I didn't really do anything on these panels. So I figured it'd be a good idea to uh, do a little clip here about these panels and how I made them, the material and all that kind of stuff um, right now. And we can just refer back to it uh, later on when I show that video or make that video. So. Uh, all, everything in front of me here is kind of a mock-up of what I did. I do have some pictures I'm going to show at the end of the actual um, setup I had here to make these. Um, but this is basically uh, the same thing. Maybe the clamps are different and some of the little things I used were different pieces of wood and things like that. But it's basically the same thing. I could actually make the panels with what I have set up right now. So um, let's get into, uh, we'll look at the panels first, the material I used, and my... Um, my setup of uh, what I'm using here. Okay, like I said, we'll talk about the panels first. Uh, this is a piece of scrap that I used to kind of test as a test piece. I still kept it, so this is what I'll use to uh, show everybody. Now, the material is about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. It's what I used to make my templates with, so I've talked about it before. I get it at the big box store. So you, I think it's used for like an underlayment for flooring or something, I don't know. But it's like $15 a sheet, 4x8 sheet, and um, it has hardly any voids. Uh, only one sheet I've ever bought had some voids in it, but most of the time it doesn't. It's made up of three layers of, um, try to get it in here, maybe you can see it. It's three layers of um, plywood, basically together there. Uh, three sixteenths of an inch thick. It's not marine grade at all, but for these ceiling panels, I didn't think I really needed marine grade. Uh, the back side, which is the side I'm showing here, uh, was all epoxied up to the ceiling, and I epoxied the edges. And then the front side, or the face side that you would see, uh, was painted with a marine grade paint. Um, so really, I didn't think I had any problem here. It's all on the inside of the boat, too. All right, we'll do a quick overview of everything here, and I'll zoom in and show it in more detail. Uh, where I used to cut the grooves uh, is my Dremel. This is an old Dremel, uh, and it had this piece that I'll show how that works, goes with it. Uh, I have a couple of um, strips of the same material I made the, um, the panels out of here. This is kind of a jig I made on this side and this piece is just here to uh, just take the Dremel past it without it tipping and doing other things. I'll show you how that works anyways. Uh, I got this straight edge here which I used to run the Dremel along. And there's some wood pieces back here just to support this metal straight edge. And a bunch of clamps and things. And I'm doing it all on this uh, piece of mahogany. A really wide piece that I just happened to have around that was the right length. Now these pieces are four feet long because that's the length of the plywood. I didn't need it four feet long. Uh, they don't go all the way to the from the center of the boat to the, uh, the outside over the window. But they don't, they don't really have to. I'm building a soft hit over there. Um, so four foot was fine. And that's what these are all set up to four foot uh, wide. And then I cut each piece 12 inches wide to start with. So it was an even number to cut my plywood and get my pieces out of. Um, and so now we can zoom in a little more and look at things a little more in detail here. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the, uh, the tools. Here's the Dremel I use. It's a pretty old Dremel. I've had it forever and it has a, uh, a rounded kind of bit on it. I'll try to zoom in on that so you can see that. And then uh, I had this adapter piece that goes on the end and basically it just, uh, you unscrew this, pull it off and uh, screw this piece on here. And then you can use it as a router. Um, it has an adjustment on this side to move it up and down. I've already got it adjusted to the right height to cut these, but um, 
that's how that works. Okay, so as far as the jig itself goes, um, we'll look at this strip here because this is kind of the layout of the actual uh, grooves that I cut into here to represent the uh, plank look. Uh, these are three inches apart. I picked three inches because it was an even number to divide uh, four feet by. Um, and this dark line here I did with a sharpie with an arrow to here is how far off the metal straight edge has to be for the router bit to line up with this groove. And so I did that all the way along this piece for four feet. Okay, now we'll cut a groove in an actual piece of a panel. And um, first thing for the setup, uh, made sure this is this piece is flush with this edge of this mahogany base that we're using. And this piece that I clamped on is at 90 degrees and I squared that up already. Uh, so we got that going. Now the actual panel, once you put it in, uh, this piece back here is kind of loose. Uh, this piece is clamped up as you can see. Uh, and you just make sure this is tight up against this piece and tight up against here. Now, the piece I'm using is not cut square on the end. It's just a test piece or whatever. And I want to cut another groove in right here, so I'm just going to move it over here, but it would be flush over there. Uh, once that's in, I can clamp this piece up against against it. And I would do this in a couple places, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to do it here. And uh, and then we got to set up the straight edge. Now for the straight edge, I want to line it up with this darker line to cut the groove over here because that's how far off the Dremel center of the bit is. And once I get it on there, then I'll square it up over here. Make sure it's square all the way down that end. And then I'll just clamp this over here. Now this isn't my favorite clamp here. It's kind of a pain, but I'm going to use it today. It's the one I have. Alright, now i got to clamp down it. The other side. Alright, I'll put another clamp over here just for just to hold it. But now it's all set up and we're ready to cut a groove in it. So uh, I'd have to move this piece for each one obviously, but everything else is set up pretty good. So it's just a matter of moving this as we go along. A little tedious at first, but once you get into a groove, it, it wasn't too bad. What I do is put this in here like this and basically just hold it very tightly against this, uh, I'll call it a fence actually, uh, straight edge, and just work my way down along the edge here. I find it easier if I hold on to this thing right here because it kind of wants to move a little bit. But I'll start it here and we'll... Just a real quick sanding and that's it. It's done and I move on to the next one. paint these panels before I installed them. Thought it'd be a bit easier. So what I used was this Interlux pre-coat primer. Uh, brush that on. And then I used this Interlux bright side polyurethane with a flattening agent uh, added to it to get a kind of a semi-gloss finish. And I brushed that on as well. To install these panels I wetted out the ceiling plywood and the back side of the panels with um, unthickened epoxy. And then I thickened up some epoxy with uh, colloidal silica and I spread it on the back with a spreader and then uh, clamped them up there with some special clamps I made. So got the first 
two ceiling panels installed. I had to make these brackets this morning to actually hold them in. Uh, I only got two done because I only made eight brackets, so... First one was a little difficult, only because I didn't know how much epoxy to mix up. Because um, it's just epoxy up there. But the second one went a little better. Okay, so once all those ceiling panels were in, it was time to um, cover up these beams. Now, they were pretty roughly built. Uh, they were just glued together scraps of mahogany, and uh, they needed to be covered. So I ended up using a quarter-inch um, mahogany plywood and just epoxied them onto the sides of the beams. And I was lucky that I made one template, and it kind of was a good starting point to get all the um, veneer pieces shaped up, and I just had to tweak them once I got them over here at the boat. Well, today's August 1st, 2018. I'm on a little burn lunch break from work, so I figured I would come home and just gonna go for a walk, but it's raining out, so I thought oh, I'll just see how these uh, ceiling beam veneers are gonna lay out on this piece of sapele mahogany I got. It's a quarter inch material. And uh, you can see there's a template on there. That's the template represents half of the ceiling beam. So I'm going to need 22 of these pieces. I think I can get 10 pieces probably out of one 4x4 four four section of plywood. But two sheets, so I have two 4x8 sheets, so I have plenty of material. I'll just pick and choose the best grain. If I can get 10 out of this piece, it'll be nice because I need 10 for the sides that you see when you walk into the boat. So. If I can get them all out of one piece, it'd be nice because you know, the grain will match and the color will match and it'll just look better. So I'll start by probably just cutting pieces out of here because I don't want to have a piece right on a, a seam here, which is like, you know, here, like a mirrored seam. So I'll cut along these seams and then lay out the pieces and try to get the grain to match what would be a curve well, on the ceiling get it as nice as I can so that's something I'm probably gonna do and uh, I got an idea what I'm gonna do so when I get my next chance to do it I'll, I'll start cutting out some of these veneers <laughs> Today's August 19th, it's a Sunday. Uh, today I'm working on installing some of these ceiling beam veneers. Got eight of them up yesterday, eight pieces. Um, there's 22 pieces in all. Got a few in the other day, uh, earlier in the week. But I'm uh, hoping these dry so I can get the last eight in this afternoon. I don't have enough clamps to do four pieces at once so it takes a lot of clamps because the beams are a little twisted and I don't know they just just takes a lot of clamps um, I'm gonna fit these couple in next yesterday I also got there's a rigging tube area epoxy with three coats it's a little bubbly because it was kind of warm but I'm going to sand that anyways and probably put some varnish on it. I'll paint the inside of the actual tube. The same thing on the other side. Um, so right now out of 22 beams, I have beam veneers. I have 10 of them in. So 12 to go. 
Hopefully we get all 12 in today. Mm -hmm. There's eight right there. There's uh, four right there. Mm -hmm. Down to eight now. August 31st, you know, last day of August, last night I got all these beam veneers varnish for the first coat. You now wood tends to soak it up a little bit so it's not, it doesn't have a sheen like, kind of like you can see on the front piece that was done before, but we'll have to uh, sand this down and uh, put on a second coat. I think I've only used two coats everywhere else, so it should be be good. pictures of or some blocking I added over by the door in the door hatch area. Now that's for future uh, work in the galley area that actually is all done now but I'm not going to show it until I get to that because I did it in 2019. So um, you'll see just a couple pictures of that blocking, nothing exciting there. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to show a few pictures of the idea I have for um, some soffits I'm going to put along both sides port and starboard side of the boat just above the windows. Now you might have noticed if you had the keen eye that I didn't bring the beam veneers all the way to the ends like right over the windows. I left them short and that's because I'm going to have these soffits there and the soffits are where the wiring for the flybridge is going to come um, back and drop down into cabinets and wherever it needs to go um, instead of the rigging tube that the factory put in that was just a big plastic tube that came down into the uh, starboard side cabinet. So these soffits will replace that and so you're going to see a little bit about the new rigging tubes because I put one, I kept the one on the starboard side but I also added one on the port side as well. So um, those rigging tubes are made out of three quarter inch marine grade plywood. They're basically two rings. Uh, I glued them together because I wanted it to be an inch and a half thick. They're two uh, three-quarter inch thick pieces of plywood um, and I cut them out on my, um, well, actually I used my drill press with a couple of hole saws and just uh, cut them out of the plywood uh, and then epoxied the two pieces together and then fiberglassed over them and kind of rounded the edges and things as you'll see and then epoxied them up on the flybridge uh, part of it. That way if any water gets in there it's not going to drop down in those holes. So anyways, um, we'll look at that stuff and then wrap this thing up.
Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it and you uh, come back for the next one. So until then, have a good one and we'll see you really soon right here on Renovations for Fish. Oh,